Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Corum Tie Bridge Tourbillon. You can see this 2010 limited edition of 80 pieces with flying tourbillon in titanium on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing of this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Corum Tie Bridge Tourbillon. Now the watch on my wrist represents an ergonomic miracle of sorts. As large as the timepiece is, it's not as big as it looks, and it wears even smaller than that. Let's talk about my wrist, 16 centimeters in circumference, and why this watch, which is fairly large, fits it easily. First and foremost, the distance across what would conventionally be 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock is a very manageable 42.5 millimeters. I say very manageable because all in titanium and, frankly, mostly made of air, the watch is light on the wrist. It's also nicely cambered with a true arc to its case back, so it wraps itself around the wrist. The lug-to-lug -lug span across the case is 52 millimeters, which means it's not altogether that much larger than a contemporary 40 millimeter Rolex on a solid end link bracelet, but it is considerably lighter. And at only 13.7 millimeters thick, it's actually slimmer than you might first guess. The timepiece being considerably slimmer, for instance, than an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, and only about 1.5 millimeters thicker than something like a Rolex Daytona. Let's open it up and take a little bit of a closer look at the ergonomic elements, and then we'll finish the equation and understand why the sum of the parts is incredibly comfortable. Titanium is light. It's also hypoallergenic. So if Rolex 904L steel with its high nickel content doesn't get along with your wrist, this will. You can also see how dramatically sloped that case flank is. I would say down to 14 centimeters in circumference, your wrist is going to wear this one easily with perfect fit. Now, although the strap does conform to the lugs, that is to say there's no daylight between strap and case, aesthetically pleasing, this often leads to flare or a strap that wants to fight your wrist. Not here, as the strap pretty much follows the camber of the case, arcing to follow the exact exit angle of the metal where the lugs end, the strap continues. You'll also see that a large amount of material has been evacuated on the top, and then still more has been evacuated on the bottom, the result being a very pliant, soft, supple, and comfortable strap that's willing to meet you halfway. The clasp is very substantial. Now, I've undone it so you can see it in its entirety, but twin trigger release for absolute security. The clasp itself is made of steel, which is reassuring as all of these smaller swing arms could be a bit tenuous in titanium, thus crafted in steel for rigidity and robust strength. They're also double deployant. You can see the twin swing arms allowing the watch to work better with a smaller wrist. Of course, trigger released, not friction fit, more secure still. When you have a double deployant clasp, it's more likely to work well with a small wrist because you don't have that one big up and over fold that can pinch a smaller forearm like mine. So Quorum, I appreciate that measure. The case itself is nicely executed. All of satin finish on its top. It's a directional satin grain that spans the arc of the case. You can see that the bezel provides horizontal character lines for definition of this large mass of metal. And there's a slight recess to the flanks of the case, punctuated by polished borders to add a little bit of differentiation and contrast. And then the watch itself, perhaps I should say the Coram CO22 movement, taking pride of place at the center of a spectacular dial. In fact, the dial is all the movement, and the movement is all the dial. The bridges are in R-cap, which is an aerospace material similar in some respects to the so-called German silver used on Longa watches. Now, you can see it is a tourbillon known as a flying architecture. So this is a flying tourbillon, and I'm going to pull the crown and move that offending hour hand out of the way for an easier view. So there's no upper bridge to the tourbillon. You can see it as the quorum key, the double key, and it pivots entirely on its underside mounting to the bridge. Of course, the bridge, a reference to the Golden Bridge architecture first proposed by Vincent Calabrese and brought to market in gold by Quorum in 1980. 
This high-tech adaptation is visually spectacular and it has long legs. With a 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate and twin mainspring barrels, you can expect 72 hours of autonomy between windings. And of course, the watch has the look of a space frame. Not only is it high horology, but it's quite progressive in its design. It's meant to evoke aircraft, race cars, America's Cup yachts. It's almost a piece of captive architecture on your wrist intellectually beautiful, emotionally compelling, and with 80 pieces made, quite rare. It also features 50 meters water resistant for just a little bit more than you would expect of a quorum bridge. Neither a dress watch nor a sports watch, it's a timepiece with immense and individualistic personality. You can see it and you can purchase it on our website.